We're talking about ways to make money from home, full-time income, part-time hours, because who wants to work 40, 50, 60 hours a week? How y'all doing? Where are you from? How y'all doing? Where are you from? How y'all doing? We got a little bit of crackling going on. Just a minute. How's this on your end? I keep forgetting. Let's try again. Again. That's worse. How about now? Try again. That's worse. So while we're waiting for How the now? while we're waiting for the sound to, to get better. Where are you guys from? Where are you at? What's going on? Let me know where you're from. What's going on? I think this sound right here is the best we're gonna get. I think this sound right Yeah, you know, that's close enough, right? Uh, this this might have to be repaired. I'm not really sure. I just had a crazy sale today. A really crazy sale. Uh, I sold a foam finger. If you guys remember the video I posted a few weeks ago. Let me see if I can even find it. Uh, I, I bought a foam finger. No, you know what? It was on my TikTok account. <laughs> my TikTok and Instagram stories. Maybe it was also a YouTube short. You know, there's so many things here. Foam finger... And I sold it for 250 bucks. How crazy is that? 250 bucks. Uh, they paid about $200 to overnight it um, to New York. I think it might be a New York Giants uh, prop, I guess. I don't know. But pretty cool. And I always like when I can do things that are a little bit out of the norm. That's one of the best things about being self-employed is you have so much freedom and so many new challenges every single day. Let me see if I can find the short. How the heck, okay, here we go. No, it is an upload, but uploads is not showing up under my uh, video, or the shorts aren't. Oh, here it is, yeah. Weird stuff sells for niche profits. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna drop this video in the chat this, this finger right here I just sold. So it took me, let's see, May 8th, 2021. May 8th to August. Is it the 12th? 11th. It took, let's see. May 8th, 2021 to August 11th, 2021. How many days is that? About a hundred days. So it took about a hundred days to, sh to sell that. And I made uh, a pretty decent profit on there. So we've got a lot of people in the chat. We're going to say hi to them. Now we've got Mike, Yvette, Tom, Jules, Jackie, Gittens, Young, Sammy, Gary Welshmeyer, Preston D, Michelle, Chastity Grant, Sherry Y, Annie B, Doyle Warehouse, Elizabeth, Shows on Sean, David, Emily, Chuck D. Flips, and Michael 5000. Welcome, one, welcome all. I'm doing great. Hope you're doing good too. I got a haircut. It's just too humid out. Um, so, first of all, what questions do you guys have about your businesses? What are you working on? What advice can I offer? Um, what I'm working on, I've got some YouTube videos in the funnel. Uh, I'm working on some. Uh, Kate, like some books on, uh, on Amazon, low content books. I was uh, reached out by a company who facilitates that process. Uh, things like word searches or Sudokus, like simple stuff. And I'm really curious if there's ways to make good money doing that as well. Uh, because when you ever, whenever you have these products, be it private label, uh, be it your own ebook, be it whatever, um, even like a YouTube channel to some extent, if you, if you can scale up that way, you can start making some good money. Let's see, we've got uh, people in South Carolina, North Carolina, California, Missouri, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome one, welcome all. Emily says, I love it when weird stuff sells. So do I, so do I. It's so much fun. Uh, what else are we doing? So I've been listing a bunch of sports cards. My eBay store, which is 90% sports cards and books. 
Uh, so really easy to ship, really easy to list. I just hit $10,000 gross revenue in the past 90 days, which is a little bit less. It's probably about 80 or 60% of my Amazon store. So I'm doing pretty good on those two fronts. My Amazon store is mostly electronics and DVDs. My eBay store is mostly sports cards uh, and um, books. And I'm, I haven't gone sourcing for inventory in months. So it, that's, what I, that's why I'm picking those things because shipping costs are very low. Uh, and so my gross revenue minus, you know, shipping is going to be like <clears throat> 80 or 90% profit. Or sorry, minus fees, I mean, not shipping. Because shipping on a sports card is 51 cents for the vast majority that I'm selling. Shipping on books is three bucks, four bucks. I, uh, I sold, um, and, and here's a, a quick tip for you guys. And this is how I've made almost 500 bucks in the past two days on two sales, which is pretty crazy. Uh, and the total cost on those two sales in terms of um, in terms of what I paid for the items was like seven dollars, probably less than that to be totally honest because one of the items came in a pallet. And it was a, a Bible uh, commentary set and that foam finger. Now the list price of those two items was not the highest. I think it was like it was about half list price and then half shipping. Uh, and the reason I got so much in shipping is because uh, I have options to ship. So the, the Bible set went to someone in Israel. So that's cool. Uh, they used eBay global shipping program. So I only paid eight or nine bucks to ship it to them. But because I was the only seller who offered eBay global shipping, I got the sale, even though my books were priced about 50 bucks higher than the next lowest offer. Uh, and this foam finger, so I didn't make that much money off of shipping. Um, they were charged the, the, what I did is, as I measured it out, I weighed it, and they were charged the retail rate. But because I spent so much money on shipping through UPS, I was able to save about 70 bucks. Uh, so even though I didn't make money on shipping, like the way I look at it, I made money on my uh, business account, basically. I mean, that's a way of putting it. Um, I did not overcharge them. I charged them the right way, and I got a discount on top of that. And so just for having more options, I made about 120 bucks um, shipping. Not to mention, they chose mine over other options, which is pretty cool. Jules says, question, I got some new Crayola brushes for 33 cents. They sell for $3. Can I open an Amazon seller and sell on there? So for Crayola, you're going to be gated. Uh, but you could sell them on eBay. We got two bucks from Lolo. Lolo, thank you very much. Lolo says, you deserve money. How do I get ungated in DVD? Well, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, and to get ungated in DVD, you're gonna have to put an order in through a wholesaler. So uh, you can do aent.com or there's I one more, I forget the name. AENT is a thousand dollar minimum, so it's kind of expensive. Um, but supposedly, supposedly, and I don't know, I haven't tried this, I'm already ungated, so I'm not gonna do it again. Um, Mountain View Movies, uh, well, you can get engated there with a, a lower minimum order. I can't confirm that, I don't know, but I have just heard that MountainViewMovies.com um, uh, supposedly works. Again, I haven't done that, so don't come back to me and say Mountain View doesn't work, uh, because the only person that I'm officially recommending in this video, uh, or publicly for that matter, is AENT.com because that is the company that I personally got ungated with. I don't want to be putting out false information. Uh, let's see. Yeah, J. Rose says, no, you'll be blocked from selling Crayola. Sadler says, you look old with that haircut. I am old. I look how old I am. Uh, Emil says, I just worked 12 hours laboring and thought to myself, I can sell shoes and make more money. Emil, you are totally right in a lot of cases. Can you put links to these? Uh, AENT is just AENT.com. And I've got a video. Let me see if I can find this video that outlines the whole process. And if you want to, you can buy my course. If you don't want to, you don't have to buy the course because, uh, again, I've got it all. For free on YouTube. How crazy is that? Just type in DVD on gate WBK. And, um, what? Oh, yeah, there we go. 
that's my video how to get engaged in Amazon uh, uh, DVDs. Um, you know, it, to, for for what it's worth, it looks like it is the most popular DVD ungating video. But I'm just amazed that more people aren't watching it because I outline every single step in great detail. Let's see. Is FBM shipping a book $3? Asks Tommy Boy. So depending on the weight of the book, it's going to vary from like $2.76. I believe that's the minimum price for bound matter media mail. Um, up to however much it weighs. Up to like, you know, 25 bucks maybe even. Um, the issue with FBM books, the, the sneaky hidden fee, which is not really hidden, it's published, but just a lot of people don't expect this, is there is a buck eighty um, media fee, basically. Whoops, just relaunched Chrome, it updated, so, uh, you know, now, oh, there we go, the chat's back, okay, the chat was gone for a quick second. I really do want to hear what you guys have to say and your input on this kind of stuff. What questions do you have? Because the whole reason I go live every Wednesday, or I try to go every Wednesday at least, uh, is because um, I want to answer your questions. I know that there are a lot of people out there, a lot of scummy uh, YouTube people, who are lying to you about you know what they've done. Uh, you know, they say they've done a billion dollars in sales, and they're just trying to sell two thousand dollar courses. They're not big accounts. You know, whenever I say that, people think I'm talking about big accounts. It's usually small accounts um, who are just trying to make a quick buck. Anyone who has a large following, not anyone. There's a few guys I really don't like. But like Harry Tornado and Rally Roots, uh, a, a big criticism they get is that they make a lot of money off YouTube or courses. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, they're actually walking the walk. Like I was talking to Josh, or I saw on his Instagram story. I didn't talk to him. I saw it. Him and his wife made five thousand dollars last month off eBay, and if you don't want to listen to them because he makes twenty grand a month on YouTube, you're insane. Uh, you know that that's just being like resentful of someone's success. Sean says local church reached out to me to clear out their stock of yard sale items that never sold for free. That is awesome, a great opportunity. Stuff like bread makers, electronics, books, DVDs, media players, hoping to flip a good profit. Sean. You will. Someone asked about sports cards. Do I sell cards in lots? If so, how do I lot them? I lot them by player or by team, if I do. And the envelope I use is one of these bad boys right here. Um, I'm going to cover the person's name. Uh, I'll just show you the back of the envelope. I, I use one of these mailers, and I make a cut with a razor up here. And then I either print the label uh, just on the envelope, or in this case, I didn't want to do that. I have my other, I was just printing off a bunch of stuff for the house I'm buying on Monday. Yikes. And I didn't want to change that, so I just printed off a label and um, put them in here. And I shipped them eBay standard envelope. This happened to weigh two ounces. It was a lot of four cards. They all bought them individually. Uh, if you're curious, score gold parallels of like non- Hall of Fame players, just regular guys. Someone's trying to complete their parallel set. And I am happy to facilitate. Linda says, hi, I love your videos. I'm trying to ship a larger toy and having trouble finding a shipping rate under $35. So, uh, Linda, you've got two good, three good bets, I guess, depending on where you sold it. If you sold it on eBay, uh, eBay's going to have pretty affordable rates. But if you sold it somewhere else and you're trying to find your own cheap rates, I would recommend PirateShip.com or Shippo.com. And I'll just drop those two links for you. And Shippo.com. I'm not sponsored. I have no affiliate link. Those sons of bitches won't sponsor me. Um, but I'm not going to withhold info from you just because they're stingy bastards. Tom says, I'm waiting on USPS coming up from West Cali way... But no issues, East Coast getting things in a couple of days. Yeah, you know, shipping can be a, a problem sometimes. Things get lost. It's just an unfortunate reality. Young Sammy says, how many cells, I think you mean sales, do I have to, uh, on Facebook before? I'm not limited on my listings. I don't know. 
Um, I'm not sure. That would be a question maybe on the forums, Facebook, Marketplace, Limited Funds. I would guess it's more of a time thing than a sales thing. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I do not think I was limited when I started off. Maybe you have to confirm your identity. Could be an issue like that. And if I missed your question, feel free to ask it again. We're getting a lot of questions in the chat and I want to answer what everyone wants to know. Hi Blake, I found a jewelry box in the trash in a residential neighborhood with gold and silver rings and money clips in it. Wow. Where can I find an honest appraiser? So the issue with most jewelry, I'm talking 99.9%, .9 is unless it's designer jewelry, high-end designer jewelry, um, the value is very subjective. So you can go about two ways. Here's the two most common ways that jewelry gets sold. And I'm saying this to you as someone who sold probably between 75 and 50 grand in jewelry over the past 10 years. So I'm not like a huge jewelry seller, but for a few years, it was like my main thing I sold. So you can either sell it for the scrap value. That's going to be your worst bet. I would not recommend doing that unless the jewelry's broken. Um, because you're not going to get as much as you could for it. Uh, the second thing you can do is go on eBay and just type in uh, what it is. You know, describe it. Size 7 men's signet ring. Size 8 woman's solitaire uh, synthetic emerald ring. And it's going to take some research on your end to understand what you have. Uh, but, again, that's valuable info to learn. Um, there's <clears throat> tons of resources out there that give you free um, identification of gems and ring styles. But I would say, unless you have some stuff that's signed, uh, and so look for the jeweler's maker's mark on the inside of the ring, or on the back of the brooch, or the back of the money clip, probably your best bet is to appraise it yourself and find the market value. Um, if you do uh, have it on you and you can tell me the name of the jeweler uh, or the designer, maybe I can do a quick bit of eBay work right now, but I do think it is within your skill set. It's not that tough. Andrew says, I just watched your video on getting on gated in DVDs and was wondering... What if I get the invoice and everything got denied? Do I just keep trying? Here's a true story. Someone in the Facebook group tried like 20 times and they got rejected 19 times. Uh, there are common problems. So there's two main reasons you're gonna get rejected. First reason, the information on the invoice does not match your account info. Wrong address, wrong name, whatever. Second reason, what Amazon does, and I know this because with katytexaswholesale.com, I have a very good relationship with the people who do the um, Amazon approval stuff. So Amazon has their own department for emailing distributors. And they say, hey, is this legit? Because sometimes people uh, forge their invoices to make it seem like they have things they didn't buy. Um, and so if the supplier does not respond, maybe AENT is overwhelmed, who knows? Uh, you will not get approved. But if you keep trying, eventually, yes, you will get approved. AENT is a reliable source uh, if you put in the time. I'm sorry it's taking a lot of effort on your end, but just keep submitting um, invoices, or keep submitting the same invoice and make sure all the info is correct. I'm late to the party. Is your other wholesaler back up? Yes, Katie Tex Wholesale is back up. So if you want to get ungated in grocery, what you can do, and th they're having issues with Lego and Crayola. Um, apparently, Amazon is instituting some new rules about that. But for category ungating, uh, everything is kosher with these guys. There's the link. Use code WBK10. For 10% off your first order. That's an affiliate code. Just so you know. I must disclose that. Are those mailers cardstock? I've been using number 10 envelopes. Yes, they are cardstock. They are the same thickness as a... They're actually a little bit thicker. I... Boy, where is it? 
I've got my caliper around here somewhere, not sure where, and this is actually a little bit thicker than this. Um, you can, they can't be over a quarter inch thick, uh, so that's the number you're trying to stay under, but I mean, I, obviously, this is under a quarter inch thick. A quarter inch is like, probably like the width of this pen, which is pretty thick. Okay, Jules says, yes, USPS gets slower from October to Christmas. They definitely do. Howard says, is there any way to do calculated shipping on FBM per item? I had a large box that weighed six pounds, cost me 33 in shipping and handling, had it listed for 35. So what you can do is you can create your own, uh, I believe it's called the shipping matrix. Maybe that's the wrong word. Um, it's your own shipping form, and you can uh, dictate by weight or by item what the shipping is. You can't calculate by destination, at least not to my... Uh, I don't believe you can. I could be wrong on that. There could be updates. Amazon is always changing. But if you go to settings and then uh, shipping settings... So here's what I'll do. I'll just copy the link for you, um, Howard. So if you... Click that link, log into Seller Central, you will see oh, it's a template, not a matrix. Your, your shipping template. Uh, and you can do weight based, and that's going to give you a general idea. Uh, but again, I suppose what you could do is go through and create different templates for different areas based on your location. That sounds like a real pain in the butt, um, but you could do that. And right now, I generally do free shipping, but when I was shipping uh, heavy items like weights, for example, I would do $3 a pound. So I really, um, I, I had it at like a very low price and then uh, high shipping per pound because I want customers to know shipping's expensive and I'm not ripping them off. Hey, give the video a quick like. Give it a like. What are we at likewise? Someone let me know what we're, what we're at likewise because I don't know. Are we at a lot of likes? 31 likes, 34 likes. Guys, there's 115 of us. And we only have 35 likes? You know, likes help these uh, videos and my channel in general get uh, b promoted more by YouTube. So they might seem silly, but I do appreciate them. Tom says, where's a good place to get these uh, heavier cardstock envelopes? Did I put that back? I did, good. So these are actually CD mailers. That's what you're going to look up. Maybe, let me find a link on Amazon. And uh, then I can get some affiliate money from you. Not from you, from Jeff Bezos. I bought a thousand lot cardboard CD mailer. And what I do is generally, yeah, it's it's literally, um, let's see, there's a hundred. I, I bought a thousand pack, not a hundred pack. Because I ship a shit ton. So you know what? I'm not seeing the thousand packs. And the hundred packs are not that good of a deal. It's like 30 bucks for a hundred. And I think I paid 150 bucks for a thousand. Um, probably it was less. Here we go. A thousand pack. What are they currently at? Are they sold out? Dang, they're sold out right now. Um, maybe on eBay, maybe there's going to be on eBay, uh, 1000 pack card, they're six by six cardboard mailers or sleeves, cardboard sleeves, I think is actually the right word. There's so many esoteric terms for this kind of stuff. So let's see, 180, yeah, I, I, so it's more expensive now. I paid 180 bucks or 150 bucks for this uh, a while ago. Um, let me see if you guys want to do me a favor. What I'm gonna do is look at eBay Partner stuff, and I'm gonna drop an affiliate link in the um, in the chat, and you can buy that. And then I get a little bit of cash. I get like a dollar or two, and you guys uh, get that. Also, eBay's doing five percent. Um, eBay bucks right now. So you're, you're actually getting 5% off, which on 180 bucks, what is that, $9? So 
So you're paying 179 plus tax, unfortunately. So I'm sure it's actually moot. But uh, five dollar, five percent eBay bucks is not bad. Have I gotten any? I have not made a single dollar on the eBay partner stuff. How sad. How sad. Okay, so here's 1,000 cardboard. And if you want to see my video on how I package my cards, I actually, I post this video in every single one of my sports cards listings. So what I'll actually do I don't normally share my eBay store, but just to make it simple, I would like to show you guys what my standard sports cards listing looks like. Um, you know, don't like buy from me and then give me bad feedback just to be spiteful. I'll be mad. I'll find you. <laughs> uh, but like here is like um, a sports card that I listed this morning. So I'll just share this item with you guys. And in the bottom of that, that's how I list my cards. Let's see. Stupid Questions asks, is there really more room for another person selling items from Dollar Tree? Is it not saturated? The good news is about that is there are always changing inventory. There are always people dropping out of it. There are always people who are getting clever and finding better bundles. Um, Dollar Trees do not all have the same inventory. I'm sure you guys know that if you shop there. So a, kind of a common misconception is like, oh, is the market saturated? Markets are living things that are constantly in flux. Um, so just because like yesterday it may have been saturated or the going rate may have been, you know, a $1 profit, doesn't mean that tomorrow it's going to be the same way. Um, things are always changing. And so no, very, very few sources are continually good or continually bad. Hey, WBK, have you heard about those brands that got taken off Amazon because they were pressuring people for positive reviews? Crazy. Oh, yeah, I heard the same thing about um, uh, people giving refunds for positive reviews, like double refunds. Um, it was something like 5,000. It was a huge amount of uh, Chinese brands, I heard. But, yeah, I have heard about it. Lady says, what does your course discuss? The course I'm talking about isn't really a course. It's more of like an ebook, uh, And it goes over how to get ungated DVDs in painful detail. The video is free. It goes over in just average detail. But the course really breaks it down. I call it the course. You can call it whatever you want to call it. The PDF, you know, the 20-page workbook that I wrote on there, just really goes into insane detail in my opinion. Bearded Picker says, damn, didn't recognize you. Who has taken over WBK's channel? Me. I took over my own damn channel. And that's the Bearded Picker, a retail arbitrage legend. Hey, Blake, is the wholesale sites you gave out, are they good for ungating? Sorry, caught you at the end of it. So they're not an ungating service. They are a wholesaler who is approved to sell certain brands. And so like anyone who wants to charge you get to get ungated, I heard some asshole on Instagram was only charging 400 bucks to get ungated in grocery. That person's a con artist. If someone's gonna charge you money to get ungated in grocery, tell them to fuck off. Be like, listen, you're a piece of shit. Blake does this for free. Right here, katytexaswholesale.com. The link should be in the description as well as in the chat. Um, use the code WBK10 for 10% off. Uh, buy some Goya beans and you will get ungated in grocery. It's that simple. Buy 10 packs of Goya beans for like 30 bucks. Um, it's really good. Tom says, I look like Michael Douglas in Falling Down. Let's see what that looks like. Ah, that's funny. That's the movie where he uh, he like gets out of his car in the middle of traffic, and um, just kind of flips out. I'll, I'll I'll post a picture. You can't post picture. I'll post a link to a picture. Can you drop? I should be allowed to drop pictures in chats. Listen, he's an old. 
<laughs> you know what would be funny? I mean, can I do this? No, I can't. I'm going to drop a link to this picture. This is what I look like, apparently. Yikes, that's way too long. Okay, so let's get to the, Wiki the Wikipedia page. Here we go. That guy. This is what I look like, uh, apparently. What about getting engaged for premium brands like Nike, asks Greg. So, uh, the guy at K Texas Wholesale said that his Nike connection is good. He feels confident in that. Um, not so much for Crayola or Lego. For Nike, I got auto-engated back like five years ago, so I didn't have to use someone for that. I need a tie and a briefcase. Yeah, and uh, what kind of gun does he have? A little machine gun? Do they say what kind of gun he has? That's like the scene. The famous scene is him holding a gun, but I don't know enough about guns to know what it is. Um, yeah, I should watch that movie, I guess. How did you go about getting your business license for Amazon? Did you use a paid service, asks Raymond. I did not. I just went on to my state website, and I did it through Michigan.gov. Um, it was very simple. Thanks for the insight on the valuing trash joy pickup. No problem. No problem. Andrew says, thanks. Another question. Uh, after I get ungated, do I have to keep showing DVDs? Uh, so... Not for the brand, no. Not for the brands. There are some, like, I believe 20th Century Fox is a, a brand ungate, but for the category, if I didn't say that, the category is uh, forever ungate. I've never heard of someone being un ungated. Regated, I guess you could say. Basic equipment for good picks on eBay. Two-week newbie says Sharpshooter KY. A iPhone with a camera, any smartphone with a camera, and um, I don't know, go, go outdoors in the sunlight with a plain background. That is literally all you need. Anybody who says you got to have fancier stuff is lying to you, or they're just dumb. I mean, literally, I take all of my sports... Look, I, I, I dropped that link to the, my sports card, right? You can, you can check out my eBay store. Um, it's not... I'm not using fancy stuff. I'm doing probably on the lower end uh, of what people would recommend. I don't sell like clothing hardly at all, so maybe that's why. You know, I just have cards. Here's how I list cards. I'm a couponer. Once ungated, do I need proof of purchase? I only have store receipts. So there's a bit of conflicting info on this. I do not, I mean, I, from my experience, um, and this was a while ago, receipts do not help. Um, if someone says it's not authentic, it's not going to work out for you. Uh, Reezy says it does. So I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why he would lie to people. I don't think he is lying. I think in his experience it has worked. But really, when it comes down to inauthenticated uh, claims, a huge portion of it is who's handling your claim. Uh, and a lot of times, if it's being outsourced, you're going to have a hard time convincing them. Ryan Trent says, I'm in Yuma, Arizona, the world's sunniest city. Well, congratulations. I'm in Michigan, where the sun rarely shines. Bearded Picker says, Nike, be careful what you wish for. Lots of danger with counterfeits and asshole sellers. Oh, yeah. I don't, you know, I am engaged for Nike, but I have not done Nike retail arbitrage in like three or four years just because it is a minefield. Also, the trash pile had a death certificate. So weird. Best trash I've ever picked. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe you can sell that, but I wouldn't do it. It sounds kind of invasive, in my opinion. WPK is still the the OG Michael Bolton from Office Space. <laughs> uh, I was named it first. Why should I change my name? <laughs> is that, isn't that what he says? What is the website for that wholesaler, asks Greg. 
It is katytexas.com. Use the code WBK10. Uh, where were we? Getting nailed with compliance checks left and right from uh, FBA. If the items are from Walmart, shouldn't the docs exist somewhere? So in my experience, the compliance forms are going to be on the manufacturer's website if they are on there at all. Uh, and it's extremely hard to find some of them. But I was under the impression that most new toys being listed already have them. I'm in the process of setting up my Amazon seller's account and I click the individual trying to start out and they're charging the pro amount. Yeah, so you're going to have to um, do a pro account and then downgrade, but they should issue you a retroactive invo or a refund. Let's see. Stupid question says, thanks for the info, good sir. I've watched a lot of your videos and learning more every time. Good to hear. Good to hear. Uh, one last question from Andrew. He says, on average, how much does it cost to ship DVDs? $2.89 is going to be your FBM price. And the average DVD weighs about four ounces. So depending on your rate at UPS, for me, when I have a box full of 50 pounds of DVDs, uh, I'm generally paying about eight cents per DVD to FBA them to the fulfillment center, not to the customer to the customer, I think it's 276 plus your 180 uh, variable closing fee. I think I could be getting the words wrong, but I think the numbers are right. Have you ever tried print on demand? Says Kia. I have. Uh, around every presidential election, I hire VAs to spam bullshit uh, presidential t shirts, like slogans and that kind of stuff, through Teespring. Uh, and we spam. Um, Anywhere we can. Ben P says, what is the process in deciding to list cards on auction versus buy it now? Do you do buy it now and send offers? I do send offers. I don't accept offers. Um, I generally uh, am listing cards of guys who are either rookie or starters in their first or second year or all pro slash hall of famers. That's like what I do or like parallels. Um, so yeah, that's probably my, my status. Uh, and I take one picture and the minimum I list cards at is two ninety five. If they don't sell for a few months, by the time the season ends, I just begin auctioning them off at a buck 99 free shipping. You ever try a subscription box company? I did like seven years ago or six years ago, but I got screwed over by um, the tariffs that the previous regime implemented to, uh, I mean, a lot, a lot of money. I got screwed over out of a lot of money. Easy Company says, yo, Easy from Texas took your advice. Five, 10 things a day and my store is taking off. Thanks for all the free knowledge. You'll be repaid tenfold, my friend. Well, thank you, Easy Company. Good to hear it. Good to hear it. Sorry, I'm getting phone calls. Don't you hate when you um, ask a company to uh, not call you? It's lagging on mine because I'm getting phone calls. And I say, email me, don't call me. Don't call me. Don't do it. Email me. Teresa Casale says, Hi, I applied for merch by Amazon. Thinking about mentioning elections. Can I put Trump on a t-shirt or is that an IP complaint? So you can't use someone else's photograph, uh, but you could draw your own picture of him or you could use the things he says when he's like making a public speech because he's a public figure. So that's all um, easy, fair to use. Does anyone know how many items you need to purchase from KTexas Wholesale to receive an invoice? The website says you have to purchase 10. Yeah, whatever your Amazon page says, follow that. Not everyone's going to have the same advice or the same requirements, so just follow what Amazon says. 
It, you know, Amazon wants you to be ungated. I know people don't believe that, but they want more sellers. They really do. And so when you go to list something and you get your page that says like, you know, you have to get, provide invoices, they're going to say exactly what you need. They're not trying to trick you or something. How many things you have to buy from a wholesaler to be engaged in grocery? Yeah, that's richest. Okay, retracted it. Have you checked out What Not for Selling Cards? It's live auction, and I think you do well with your personality. I've heard about What Not. I have not researched it yet. Flip the World says, join the WBK Army. Smash the like button or drop me, give me 20. <laughs> yeah, we're only at 77 likes. Let's get above 100 likes because we have over 116 people here. So everybody, quick, take a second, like the video. It is much appreciated. Whatnot.com. Is it, let's see what it is. Whatnot.com. Is it, shoot. Buy and sell and go live. That does sound fun. Maybe I can contact them and uh, and they'll pay me. I want to get paid. That's what it comes down to, right? I'm all about giving out free info, and I'm also all about getting paid from giant companies with uh, VC money. I'm sure they're funded. Whatnot looks definitely like they've been funded. Funding. $50 million. Holy shit. Not bad. <laughs> That's a lot of money, though. I mean, it depends who's doing it. They had a seed round of 40, a $4 million, Series A of 20, Series B of 50. Wow. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I will definitely check them out. You'd be good at live auctions. You know, I definitely want to try this. Flip the world says, I trust you more with this look. I did, I was looking pretty skeezy, I know. Sonny says, hey Blake, added health and fitness to my beauty uh, category. Doing good with sex lube from Dollar Tree. Two for 10 bucks, good job. David says, listed an old TI calculator. Most listings had a pick of the new version. Find a listing with a pick of the old version. After shipping, I noticed the listing describes a different calculator than the pick. Advice? Well, at this point, you're kind of screwed, David. If the customer complains, you're going to have to refund them. There's no hack for that, unfortunately. I almost hit the thumbs up, but the haircut is messing with me, says Bearded Picker. Don't worry, I'm still, I'm still keeping this. That's the important part. Ben P says, do auto relistings count towards your zero insertion limit? Uh, I think so. I think so. Only 95 likes. We're over 100. Yay! Over 100 likes. Woohoo! You know what? Wow. Went to National two weeks ago. And had an Mbappe card graded. Is he a soccer player? I'm pretty sure I sold his card. Or no, maybe I still have it over here. Um, let, me, let me see if I have one. He bought it for 800 Sold it for 2450 That's a hell of a flip, my friend. Do I have that card? I don't know. What, I'm, what I've been doing is I'll buy, like, a box of retail cards, football or whatever, and I'll sell all the basic cards, and I'll keep, like, one or two. And so I'm making, like, a 70% profit on the basic... Oh, crap. Oh, jeez. I'm doing too much right now. I'm doing too much. I got to keep myself calm. Don't want to screw up these cards. They're just sitting in a stack of penny sleeves. And uh, that's a bad way to store cards. Hmm. Well, I can't find the card I was looking for. It's, ar it's around here somewhere. Okay, let's 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 calm down. Yeah, I can't find it. I don't know.
whatever. It's gone forever. Um, hey, three bucks from Big Drift Thrift. Thank you, Big Drift Thrift. Forrest Gump called, he wants his hair back. <laughs> yeah, I got the plain old buzz. I, uh, I said to my barber, just do what everyone else is getting. I want what everyone else is getting. Did they get this haircut? I, I don't know. I don't know if he was lying to me or not. I, I think it was just an easy, I mean, it was a cheap haircut. It was only 20 bucks. How much does a haircut cost in your area? Is 20 bucks a good deal for your haircut? I think that is exceptionally cheap for a haircut. Like around here, especially with everyone like, you know, being able to pay more for stuff because they're getting various forms of money from the government, uh, be it PPP loans or, you know, unemployment or whatever, haircuts cost like 30 bucks around here. It's pretty crazy. So I did, I paid 20 bucks for the haircut and I gave a $6 tip. Uh, because, I don't know, even though I didn't like the haircut, one of the things that you always gotta do is tip your barber. Right? I mean, you don't have to, but I do. There's no law that says you have to, but whatever, I do. 15 after tips for my buzz cut says Firecrest. 45 bucks for a haircut in San Diego. That's expensive. 65 says a vet. 50 to 80 because I'm female says Megan East. 15 bucks for young Sammy. 20 bucks for Ben P. Mbappe a soccer. I swear to God, I have one of his cards. Um, but I don't know where it is. I didn't list it because I, I knew I knew the name, but I did not um I didn't know what it was worth. So I'm just like fumbling around right now trying to find it. Which, this is the kind of content you come here for. I know. I know it is. Don't have to tell me. Maybe it's over here. I don't know. I'm gonna get some water. Hey, one second, I'm gonna get some water. I want you guys to ask me questions, or if you have no questions, Tell me your next biggest business idea. I'm, I'm thirsty. Dying over here. I have too many sports cards. If my warehouse seems messier than usual, that's because it is. All this shit here. There is so much shit everywhere because I am currently homeless, for lack of a better term. Currently homeless. Um, we're closing on the house on Monday, and we're staying with family until then. And I don't want to have my crap at their house, so I have it all in my warehouse. Could we have stayed at the warehouse? Yes, we could have. We absolutely could have, but I don't think Ashley would have liked that. No, sir. I even brought it up to her. I said, Ashley, you know, we, we could just stay, because right now we're commuting, like, a, an hour and a half there, an hour and a half back. And I said, you know, we could avoid this just if we stay at the warehouse. But she does not, she, she's, um... She doesn't want to do that. Her her limit for how, uh, how you know how hobo adjacent she'll be, <laughs> a little bit higher than mine. If I can find that card, I will show it to you guys. But it's currently MIA somewhere in my warehouse. 
18 plus tip in Kalamazoo says Howard. Howard, I was just in Kazoo yesterday. Tom says, whatever my electricity costs because I buzz it to save paying for a bad haircut. Yeah, Tom, you know what? I think you're probably a smarter guy than me. You could have done that for $9.95 with an arbitrage clipper then flipped it. I could have. I could have. I want to buy Gaylords of unprocessed shoes. Says flip the world. Why? So you can smell them? What are you? Some kind of pervert? Chris? <laughs> I don't know where to buy uh, pallets of unprocessed shoes. I have no idea. Let's see. Hmm. Here's one, B&G Trading. They've got a half pallet of Kids Toms for $7.50. Here you go, Chris, you disgusting guy. Elevate your perception of value. Says, hey, bud, how you doing today? Hope all is well with you and yours. My first big score was a card I found in the garage sale on the side of a box of other cards. Cool. What what card was it? 2006. There we go. Pokemon Gold Star Hollow. God, God. Great find, man. Great find. Out and first time viewer, by the way. Just subscribed as well. Well, thank you, Elevate Your Perception to Value. Really appreciate that. And I'm glad to hear that you made some big bucks. Daryl says, are you renting your warehouse or do you own it? I am renting what I was going to do. So here's the backstory on my life over the past six months. Um, I wanted to buy a house with a big pole barn on it. Turns out that costs a lot of money. Also turns out when you're self-employed, they think you're a drug dealer. It was so hard to get approved for a mortgage. Like, it was, I, I naively thought, oh, it's as simple as just, like, proof of income. No. No, it's not. They went so far as to question the validity of my phone bills. They thought I was faking phone bills. Why? I don't know. To scam the bank? It's one of those things where it seems like it's so weighed down in bureaucracy between the government and banks and your realtor and all that bullshit that no one knows what they're doing. And everyone has their simple task to complete. And the sum of the tasks makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. It's insane. This not knowing where that card is, it's a prism. Um, like, I, it's a great find, and I want to know where it is, but I can't find it. Maybe I already sold it. Maybe I sold it for too cheap. Who knows? Well, I'll look to find it. Dara says, $15 includes a shave and waxing my son's unibrow. Best shop in town with men's hair cuts, and they're priced at the lowest. That's a good deal. Flip says, uh, and smelling shoes isn't perverted as long as the feet are in them still. Sure, bud. Keep telling yourself that. I don't know what creepy shit you and Stacy are into. None of my business. Hey, Chris, speaking of which, remember that big finger I, I had? I sold it for $250 today. Can you believe that? Crazy.
Megan says, I did not mean to start the eBay posh side hustle. Not new to business world. But back in on accident and loving it, killing it. Going backpacking for three weeks. Close and start over. When return, Megan. So what you can do on eBay, and I don't sell on Poshmark, so I don't know. But on eBay, you can go on vacation mode. And just, you accumulate sales throughout your entire vacation. It's great. And you don't have to ship. You, you, there's no uh, penalty for not shipping for three weeks because you're on vacation mode. That's what I do. David says, yeah, the loan is a real hornet's nest for self-employed. It is. Yeah, so what I wanted to do was buy a house with a pole barn. Couldn't do that. So I ended up compromising and buying a house just close to here for like under what I wanted to pay or what I, I person what I, what I can afford. Um, and so I'm just going to keep paying rent here. It's, you know, I don't like that. It's not great, but... Currently, it's my only option, so I'm going to keep doing it. Ken says, are all the cards from packs you open? No. I also buy lots of cards on eBay or on Mercari, and I list them individually. Um, it's a, it isn't the smartest thing to do. I did the math yesterday, and if the issue is, is if all the, sards, if all the cards sell, I'm making like 200 bucks an hour. But there's no guarantee all the cards will sell. And so I think probably it comes down to a hobby that pays you like 30 bucks an hour, I'd say. Um, so I don't do it like first, but I, I try and do it every day just to keep my uh, store consistent. Megan says, I thought vacation mode was bad. Thank you. I mean, it's not great, but it's better than shutting your store down. Um, you're going to get less sales when you're on vacation mode than just like regular, but it's way better than being, um, than being in, uh, your, your store, like shut down, you're closing your store. Lag says business idea, ha, long-term high-end collectibles, collectibles with well-known IP. Ken says, do you sell on Walmart? I do not, but I do have a seller account. Uh, I do have a seller account. I have just never gone through. And done all the work to get it to get things listed on there. Ben P says, Do you list on eBay seven days a week? I do buy it now listings five days of the week, and I have auctions relisting automatically on weekends. Now, the re automatically relisting auctions on weekends, I don't think that those um, count as activity the way I'm talking about the buy it now listings, but I do low auctions, so it does bring traffic to my store. It's not as good as listing things or doing like end and relist or end and sell similar, I mean. But it still does bring traffic to your store. Uh, have you ever used the Wish app to buy and resell on eBay? I've seen large lots of Pokemon cards for cheap. So my guess is those are fake as shit, Daniel. Those large lots of Pokemon cards. Ty Horvath says, How do you handle Book Club Edition books? Finally able to catch you live. Um, what do you mean, how do I handle them? I list them like any other book. Firecrest says, the cards on Wish are fake. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That missing card is driving me me nuts. It is driving me nuts. I am, like, I, I really, because now that he said it sold for that much money, I'm like, shit, did I lose it? What am I doing? It was a pack pull. That's always fun, isn't it? Pulling cards on a pack. I love opening cards. Do you guys want me to open some cards live on the stream right now? Because I will. I tell you what. If you want me to open um, cards, what I can do is I've got a few options for opening cards. I could do some cheap tops baseball cards. I could do some more valuable uh, Bowman 2021 Chrome Mega Blasters. Uh, I could do some 2020 Panini Contenders uh, draft picks basketball cards. I could do all of that. 
And if you want me to open on camera, I will. So if we can get, just um, comment uh, card unboxing. If we get 15 comments that say card unboxing, I will walk back there right now and I'll pick something out and we'll cut it with the razor and we'll open them up live just to keep things fresh because it's, the, I was going to say the week's almost over. It's Wednesday, but I feel like the week's over. I'm tired. One, two, three, four, card, five, six, seven, eight. Mmm, sorry guys, only eight unboxing comments. Ryan Trent got his Elite and Prestige 2021 NFL today. How much did you pay for the Prestige 2021? Nine card unboxing requests. Ooh, six more. Ten! But you said it twice. Okay. Five more. Five more people. Four more. He <laughs> keeps spamming it. Ken really wants to see this. Okay, close enough. Do you guys want to see a Bowman Mega Box? Uh, do you want to see Tops? Do you want to see Donruss? So we could do a little cheapy box like this, or... Okay, here's our options. Here's our options. Sorry as I walk away from the camera for a half hour. Anyone know if you can sell Book Club Edition like normal on Amazon? Uh, so Book Club Edition, it's, are you talking about older books or newer books? Because the ISBN for Book Club Edition books, it should be unique. Um, it should not have the same ISBN as uh, like a first edition book would. National treasures are flawless. Yeah, I don't have any of that shit. Ryan paid twenty-seven forty-eight plus tax. I paid thirty-five dollars for a, a box of twenty twenty-one prestige, and I did not know they were that expensive. And I was kind of like taken aback. I bought them at Meyer in Kalamazoo. It was extre I thought that was extremely expensive for a blaster box. Um. I'm going to end up making money on it, but still just like, I, w I was a bit much. Ty says they're kind of older, 70s, 80s. So for those, yeah. So in that case, um, I would just sell them on, oh, how much are the books worth? Most likely it's going to be in your best interest to sell them on, on eBay. I would not sell them on Amazon because probably those books are worth like between 6 and $10. And that is not a lot of money on Amazon and it's risking a return and all that good stuff. Bad stuff. By the way, any thrift spots in Las Cruces? No, there's oh, El Paso. <laughs> Go to El Paso. Uh, let's see. I have all my cards. I make my own um, card holders out of just cardboard. So I keep them in there. Um, but the ones back there are my cards I don't have that I'm like saving, you know, for special occasions or whatever. Special occasions like what? 
I'm just going to list them eventually. So well, let's open up. Let's open up these uh, 2020 Contenders draft picks first. Does that sound good to you guys? Does that sound like fun to you? Live unboxing. Whoa! Best bet is to sell uh, book club editions on eBay. Yeah, that's what I would do too. I would do a lot of them on, on edition. Tom says, I don't rip anymore because it's too much gambling for me. The way you make money when you rip cards like this is you have to list all the cards. Um, like, we're, like this, like here's a great example. Gardner Minshew, 2020, so second year card. Uh, I've sold like two of these for three bucks a piece. I got them out of value packs. So you're making like two bucks um, on your on your value pack or on your card. You get like 15 cards in a value pack or maybe 20 cards. It costs like 12 bucks for the pack. You sell five of those, you're already in the green. Um, so that, that's the way you do it. And then you hold out for like the big winners. So like, do I have it over here still? Like, I'll, I'll, let's see. I think I do. So I bought two cases of Prism draft picks. And I sold most of the cards. But I pulled out like this Mac Jones Green Wave Base Prism. So like, I sell most of the cards. But if there's a card that's like relatively rare, then I keep those. You guys want this? Okay, we'll do this. We'll do this. We're looking for Zion. We're looking for uh, Lamelo, James Wiseman. I forget. I'm not. I didn't watch that much basketball this year, so we'll see. We'll see. And I'll do a live lookup of any valuable cards. There should be one autograph in here. One auto. My husband and I got a property in the outskirts of town, acre and a half, with a shop for 120. Now the house of praise is for 440. Elizabeth, smart. You're smart. Okie dokie. Ooh, I love it. I love opening cards. I've been doing it my whole life, and it does not get old. I'll show you guys the cards too. Why not? We'll put the good ones in penny sleeves. So let's see. These work. There's there's uh, like base cards. Hey, we got ooh, we got a Steph Curry, and a Zion red parallel. Not bad. Not bad. I think you know I, I bought that pack for or that blaster box for twenty bucks, and this Zion red parallel probably goes for a decent amount of money and not like a huge amount of money um let's look though so this is a 2020 contenders draft picks zion red six dollars okay Six bucks, eight bucks. Let's look at the sold listings on this bad boy. Yeah, right around there. So what I think I would do is I'd list it at nine ninety-five. And uh, <laughs> Daryl says, "Smelling the witch hazel, the king with that haircut." <laughs> funny guy, funny guy. I got a James Harden uh, red parallel over here too. C.J. McCollum, and uh, there's a Steph Curry in here. So I'll pull the base cards out that I know are. Uh, Relatively good. And we'll just sell that, like, we'll sell this card for, like, three bucks. Uh, how fast do they sell? Sometimes they sell immediately. I sold a <clears throat> Mac Jones uh, Chronicles Optic Rated Rookie for 12 bucks a minute after I posted it today. So, sometimes they sell fast, sometimes they don't sell at all. And then front row seat, Cole Anthony. Is shipping a business expense tax write-off? It is not a tax. Well, so I think that you might not understand what the words mean. It is a business expense, 
but it isn't a tax write-off the way like buying a car is a write-off. It's just an expense. So there's, it's, it's you know, I'm not gonna give you tax advice because that's a slippery slope, but it is an expense that you just take off of your gross revenue. Front row seat, Cole Anthony. SS10. Is that card worth any money? Uh, looks like this card is worth about $3. So probably we are at 10 bucks uh, gross revenue. And then our three remaining cards are just base cards from guys who went to Kentucky. So if I were to sell these cards, I would just say like Kentucky lot. And I would lot up all the players who went to Kentucky. And I'd auction them off. And I'd probably get between a quarter and, and 50 cents per card. What is the best place to look up card values? Asks Jules. I use eBay. I like to use eBay for that. Okie dokie. Let's go. Let's keep going. Let's see. Hey, we got a Lonzo ball card in here. Not LaMelo. Lonzo. Selling cards. eBay or Amazon? eBay. I've never... I don't know if you can sell cards on Amazon. I have, I have no idea. Okay. There we go. Ooh, there's a card in here. A fancy one. Two fancy ones. Nice. So we've got this. We've got Ja Morant. Base. Good name. Anthony Edwards. Rookie. Red Parallel. Precious. Achiwa. Rookie. Kyrie Irving. And Lonzo Ball. So I'd say the best card here is this Precious Achiwa, is that how you say his name? Uh, Red Parallel, number nine. So let me just look this real up real quick, and we'll get some comps on there. I sell these cards as singles, uh, and so what I'm doing is putting them in just an envelope. John Morant, Murray State's finest. Okay. Do you have an Instagram? I do. It's WB Knobloch. The captain says, I have a binder full of old basketball cards. I think it's time to look the price up. Oh, yeah, definitely. Soy Boy says, hey, Blake, took your advice. Made my first retail arbitrage sale from my local dollar store. Good job. Love to hear it. Kia says, if you have a course, you will keep the price reasonable for us. Um, it's going to be stuff that if it's expensive i mean it's not going to be too expensive it's going to be cheaper than everyone else it's not going to be like it's going to be like between 30 and 50 bucks probably um but the info is all going to be available on youtube if you are willing to look through it so it's not going to be like held hostage behind a paywall uh let's see draft class 2020 That Precious Achiwa card is worth about $5. So I can get about 5 bucks. Well, wait a minute. He's This is him in his Memphis jersey, not... Hmm. So probably less than 5 bucks because usually when they're not in their pro jersey, it is worth less. And I'm just looking it up on eBay. You know, it's really simple. You put in the, the name, you put in the number of the card. This is number nine. Yeah, probably between three and five bucks for this card. Uh, nothing too fancy. Okay. Where are you looking them up? I'm using eBay to look these cards up. I have hundreds of cards from the 80s in great condition. I have no idea their value. Better to list individually or for auction. If you have an afternoon free, Elizabeth, go through and figure out, first of all, who the Hall of Fame players are from, from the, that era. I don't know a lot about baseball. Um, you know, I guess the big names are going to be like Barry Bonds, Ken Griffey Jr., uh, Pete Rose. Is that a big name? Is, I mean, Bo Jackson, 
Um, I don't really know enough about baseball to tell you, unfortunately. But look up who the big names are, and look for those players, and then once you find them, uh, look them up on your own on eBay. All right, so we've got, uh, let's see, Al Horford, Devontae Graham, winning ticket, Justin Jackson. Oh, I love these. The mascot from LSU, Mike the Tiger. Ben Simmons and Paul George. What was our red parallel? You're supposed to get one parallel per pack, I thought. No, not this time. Winning ticket. That's I guess that's the best card out of there. I forget. Um, I know more about football cards than basketball cards, so I forget the uh, what what these are. Like what the the hierarchy is. Four packs left. How do you explain? Could you explain how you? Ship it so light. I use eBay standard envelope shipping. And, um, well, yeah. Actually, you know what I can do? I can just move my camera so it's on the cards. Right? That'd be simple enough, wouldn't it? So, how are we going to do this? Uh oh. You know, this is a bad idea. This is a very bad idea, but I'm still gonna do it. Can you guys, is that, oh Christ. Is that upside down? It is. So it's not gonna work, um, because I already started the live stream. Sorry, but that is a good idea. Do you still sell the book selling guide? I took it down. I have to update it for 2021. Um, some of the information was not correct anymore. It was dated. Best place to sell junk drawer lots? eBay, do a drunk do junk drawer auction. Uh, let's see. Should I use a top loader in eBay em envelope shipping? You don't have to. Um, if, it's, if it's 10 bucks or more, or actually 9.95 or more, I use a top loader. If it's below, I don't. I haven't had an issue uh, with removing feedback if someone complains. We'll just do it like this. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to do an unboxing. I really didn't think I was going to do it. Okay. Laurie Markin out of Arizona. C.J. McCollum, LaMarcus Aldridge, ooh, Carmelo winning ticket, cool, Buddy Hill and Victor Oladipo. So one of these last two packs is supposed to have an autograph. It's going to be excited. What's the biggest card I've pulled? I don't know, to be honest. Nothing huge. I'm mostly buying retail packs, so nothing that huge. Probably um, a Herbert rookie from last year, or a Lawrence rookie from this year, probably. Buddy. There we go. Ooh. I'll be the tiger. Sadiq Bay, front row seat, out of Villanova. And uh, D'Angelo Russell. Two packs left. Have not yet pulled out our autograph. What the heck is going on? Did I get ripped off? You ever do non-sports, Pokemon, Magic, etc.? 
No, I haven't, but I will. Lag says Amazon is for graded cards only. Moving twice sucks. Helps when you're young. It does help. I am... I would not want to do this if I was, like, in pain constantly. Okay, so the autograph is in, is in the last pack. There's no autograph in this pack. Um... Our only card worth talking about, I guess. We'll go, we'll go through all of them. Right there, nothing. Well, Danny Green, uh, winning ticket. Hey, speaking of New Mexico, Pascal, Sycam or Sikkim, whatever, from New Mexico State, go Aggies! Down there in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I was a scrub on that team. I used to practice with the team when I went to school there. I did okay reselling Merlin soccer, made a hundred bucks. Not bad. Hobby or first off the lines with the money's at, but they cost more up front. Yeah, I just do this for fun, really. I'm not looking for like ten thousand dollar cards. Um, I'm not willing to spend that much money on the on the hobby boxes. So our autograph should be in here. James Harden, no. J. Rue Holiday. <laughs> Jerry Lucas. It's a throwback. Okay, so now we're at the we're at the I found the auto. I found the auto. It's not here. You ready? There we go! Kenyon Martin Jr. Nice! That's cool. This card is worth... Twenty bucks. Cool. So we're putting that guy in a top loader. Looks like he plays for the Rockets. I assume his dad was the uh, the big man for the Nets. Yeah, it looks like this card right here has comps between uh, ten and twenty bucks. So, nice. Where'd he go? Where'd he go to college? I guess he didn't go to college. Declared for the draft after IMG Academy. Huh. Cool. So not bad. Not bad, to be honest. Not bad. Let me get these out of the way. So probably, uh, I think I have those boxes listed for, for 35 bucks or 40 bucks. I probably did better opening that than, uh, than I would have selling the box. Marginally. Marginally better. The cards I'm going to list out of that are right here. And uh, they are... Oh, crap. Dropped it. Probably most of these cards, I'm just gonna list for like three dollars. I'll take one picture. I mean, well, for the for the Steph Curry and for the Ja Morant, I already have listings, so I'm just gonna add to that the quantity listing. Uh, and then everyone else, the uh, Lamelo card, the Carmelo Anthony card, I will list for probably between like three and five bucks, uh, free shipping, and they will ship in a first class envelope. This card. I'll probably hold on to to see how he does as a pro. 20 bucks is what it's going for right now. A little less than that, maybe. Um, very cool. We've got one of these now. You want to see the Tops 2020? Maybe. Baseball cards? Again, I don't know shit about baseball. The issue is when I get football cards, I open them immediately. 
New, new TV show, Extreme Sports Card Unboxing. Do a stated income loan. They wouldn't do it at my bank. I, I, I have a very good credit score, so I had a you know very low rate, uh, so I didn't want to get rid of that. You guys want to do more? We're at a, you know, we're at 90 minutes. We can take a break and answer questions, or I can do more of these. Really, it's up to you. Uh, it's what you guys want to do. I can go back to answering questions. I can answer more. I can open more cards. Do you have an issue with tracking shipping the cards? No, I don't. So I, I do eBay standard envelope shipping, and it's all tracked through there. Let's do a shot, says Daniel. <laughs> no liquor in here, sorry. Kenyon Martin Jr. He's actually not that bad, wow. Uh, 25 or 45 games played, eight games started, 10 points a game. He had a career high in his rookie year of 27 points. So he really is not that bad. He went to, uh, the, the D league or the, sorry, the G league. He plays for the, the Rio Grande Vipers right now. Did he tear it up? Rotational player. Very good. Very good. He went to Chaminade College Prep. Sierra. Man, that's crazy. Like, these guys who just go to, like, basketball high schools. Played along Scottie Pippen Jr. and Cassius Stanley at Sierra Canyon High School in Chatsworth, California. That's nuts. Do you buy your unopened cards at retail stores? Asks Ken D. Yes, I do. I'm not paying up for them. Ooh. All right, so uh, we can either end the live stream at an hour and a half, I can get back to work, or we can open up uh, these Tops cards, or we can open up the Bowman Chrome Mega Box. It really is up to you. Let's do a, oh, can I do a, I'll, I'll do a poll. I can do a poll. All right, guys, we have a poll. Answer the poll, and we will do whatever the poll says. We are, uh, we're slaves to the poll. Mr. Joe Burrow RC lot for 17 bucks. Yeah, I've been buying some rookie lots on uh, all summer on uh, eBay. I got a whole bunch of Jalen Hurts and Jordan Love rookie lots because I think those two guys are going to be good. I am I I don't like Joe Burrow. I don't think that he has the right setup to excel in Cincinnati. Um, I think he's going to get hurt, to be honest. Unfortunately. I pulled this card out of my uh, Chronicles box. Spectra, Trevor Lawrence, 
Prism. Pretty cool card. 10% 10, 10 say end the live stream. You can just leave. <laughs> you can go. You can end the live stream anytime by exiting out of the window. Hey, Blake, purchase one of those Micro Monsters Inc. toys from Dollar Tree, and they have Randall Ross in packaging. You think I can sell it? I do think you can sell it. I do think so. You guys really want to see that uh, Bowman Chrome Mega Box, huh? Don't you? Some say Tops Hanger Box. Some say Answer Questions from Viewers. So while we're voting... Um, let's answer questions. Let's, let's run the poll for like 10 more minutes and we'll answer questions until then. And then we'll open the Chrome mega box right there, because there's some good cards in here. These Chrome and mega boxes, they have a, um, I'm sorry. Did I say Chrome mega box? It's a, it, it isn't a, it's a regular mega box with a Chrome pack. I forgot to say that. So there's a, there's a, two exclusive five-card chrome packs in here. That's what I should have said. But I, I made a typo. You're going to dye your new do every live stream? No. My son and I pulled a Purple Wave Lawrence in our only box. Nice. So was that um, uh, Chronicles Blaster Box? Because I think Purple on the Blaster Boxes, right? I bought the value packs. They were 120 for 12 value packs at Target.com, and I bought two of them. And I've already made my money back. It's crazy. And I haven't even listed all the cards yet. Uh, I made my money back on just listing the Mac Jones and the Najee Harris cards, seems like. I have made it all back. I've made probably a, a quarter or half it back. But I, it's been two days. All about the Mojo Packs. Oh, yeah. I've sold a bunch of these. I think that this... I, I, I bought five of these for 40 bucks a piece a few months ago. I opened a few of them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Someone says, end the live stream. Just leave. I'm sticking around. I'm kind of hungry. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a little snack right now. Uh, we'll do. We'll do a few more minutes in the poll. Any questions you guys have about resale stuff, about business stuff, feel free to ask. But if not, we'll just you know we'll coast with a few unboxings. I think there's actually Chronicles blaster boxes for sale on Target.com right now. I could be wrong. But I checked this morning, and um, there were they were available at like 10 a.m. Elizabeth says, intrigued by dollar store stuff. Fairly new here. Do I need a special license? No, you don't. Tom says, oh, cool. Didn't think normal prism was out yet. No, there are no, um, um, I guess prestige, but like they don't have the play, the draft picks in their jerseys yet. I don't know who, who's going to have the first um, series with draft picks in their jerseys. But um, I've been doing really well with draft pick cards. Really well. Like, better than I did last year, for sure. I didn't... Well, last year we didn't have eBay standard shipping. So it was really hard to sell low-value cards. TJ says, first time catching you live. Thanks, TJ. We're like an hour and a half, almost two hours into this. So right now, I'm just answering questions. I've kind of run out of things to say like that I had planned. And we're going to open up some sports cards. 
So I hope you like that. How's the poll doing? Looks like it's pretty much tied between answer questions and uh, the Bowman box. So, yeah, if you have questions, I would love to answer them. I would love to answer them. And uh, if you don't have questions, let's open up that box real quick. And give it a thumbs up while you're here. If you guys are chilling out, watching, give it a thumbs up. We're at 137 thumbs up. Let's try to get to 150 because that would be fun. I still have to... I still have to film stuff for my video posting on Friday or tomorrow. Good question from Tom. I gotta eat this, I'm starving. Tom says, now that college students can get paid for likeness, so may the college uniform issue end up being a thing of the past. You think it'll have an effect on the hobby? I think it'll increase the hobby. I'm, I'm seeing more and more people collect their, their college players, uh, especially small college guys. Um, like guys who went to like, like uh, where was it? I sold, oh, till, I sold a bunch of Kareem Hunt um, college picks cards to a guy in Toledo who collects Toledo players. Really crazy. I've sold Northern Iowa cards. I've sold Eastern Illinois cards. Tony Romo cards. Is there a way to kill this thing on FBA? I need to have an item removed before anyone buys it. It's under a bad listing and right at the warehouse. Yes, you can delete the listing from your inventory uh, page on Amazon, on Seller Central. Just delete the listing and it'll become stranded and it can be sent back to you. Tom Bullard says Juco's. Now that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Juco cards. Rock and Thrift says, tune in for the indie hat. The beard is great though. I got it over here. I don't have it over there. Tom says, I'll never forget Khalil Mack representing Buffalo. Dude, or Tyree Jackson. I have a bunch of his rookie card. I thought he was gonna be huge. Tyree, I did. I mean, he is huge, but like in, in the game. All right, been 10 minutes. We're gonna end the poll. We're gonna open up this bad boy right here. This is worth about 60 bucks resale value on eBay. So after fees, after shipping, it weighs over a pound, I would guess. Uh, I would say we're gonna be at, let's see, we'll say 12% eBay fees, so at 60 bucks, that is uh, $7.20. Probably about, probably uh, about, probably about 15 bucks in fees and shipping. So probably only worth like $5 profit off of my original buy cost. Um, what I want to do is if I can get at least $75 in gross revenue, that's a, that's, we're going to say that that's worth it. We're going to say that's a good decision. Now these Bowman boxes go up in value the next year, like a lot. Probably it's going to be worth like... I don't know, 80 bucks? But I don't want to wait a year. Okay, so we've got our two chrome um, packs. We'll do those later. And here is the, uh, the four just like regular cards. What are my expectations on Q4 card shortages? Well, the thing is, these are all printed in America, so I don't think that it's gonna be 
a shortage the same way uh, toys are going to be a shortage. But I do think that they're going to go up in value. I mean, you're going to have a hard time losing money holding on to cards. It's just a matter of if you want to wait for it. Brady Singer, rookie. Alec Bohm, rookie. Is that first? No, not first. Nolan Arena, or uh, whatever his name is, Ar Arenado. I sold that card before. Ooh, Juan Soto. Aaron Judge. First Bowman, Jared Kelly. Nice. Bowman Prospect, Isaiah Green. And then just some uh, base cards. Nothing too fancy there. John says, I don't recognize any of these Pokemon characters at all. <laughs> nice. So we've got, uh, we're going to put these chromes in the pa in this penny sleeves. We'll sell the Aaron Judge card for probably two bucks, two or three bucks. Probably sell that card for two bucks. The Brady Singer and the Alec Bohm. The issue with just buying cards and holding them to go up in value is you don't have that money for a long time. You know, they're not, it's, there's something to be said for opening your cards and making 40% profit. 15 times as opposed to holding out for a 100% profit. All right, there we go. That's a good card. Another good card. Ryan Mountcastle. Our two, um, our two Bowman Chromes uh, prospect cards are Tyler Callahan and Seth Beer. So again, what I'll probably do is look up these values when I go through all the cards. Pull the rookies out. We'll keep those there, I guess. Only cards I sit on are the no names and Bowman. Give them a little time to see if they go up. Everything else goes right for sale. Yeah, that's what I've been doing recently. Is just putting it up up right for sale, and it's not like it's not. I mean, it, you have to remember that for most people, including myself, selling sports cards is a hobby. And if you can make money in your hobby, that's pretty awesome. Um, that's pretty rare. Not a lot of hobbies pay you to do it. So I don't look at it the same way I look at selling books or selling electronics or selling whatever. I look at it as like, hey, I enjoy this. Why not? This pack's heavy. It feels heavy. Pull an auto for this in those Mo Mojo Chrome packs. Dude, if I do, if I do, you'll see it. You'll be the first to see. Well, me. Weigh it. I did weigh these, um, but, you know, they're all... I didn't have enough to get a good sample size. Evan White, rookie. We've got, uh, ooh, Eddie Diaz, first Bowman, prospect, chrome. Nice. And Francisco Alvarez. The flipping sports card guy knows what's up. It sounds like it. I don't know. Is he a is he a big YouTube guy? I don't know. His name sounds like he knows what he's talking about, but I don't I don't really watch that much YouTube uh, for sports cards, so I don't know the ins and outs. Hey, look at that. 
That's a name you want to find. When it comes to reselling, sports stuff is the hobby. Okay, yeah, we're in the same... Ah, my name is because I flip stuff and I'm a diehard sports fan. Coach all sports. That's awesome. Very cool. Look at the beard on that guy. Charlie Blackmon. That's a beard. Bryce Harper. Just a regular Bryce Harper. And our Bowman Chromes are uh, Prospect Josiah Gray, Prospect Julio Rodriguez. Where's that Wander Franco? That'll make your money back. Uh, I don't have one. Dara says, if I could sell my husband's original Star Wars cards, we can make a killing, but I might be part of that killing. <laughs> That's funny. So does eBay have a service like FBA? No, they do not. You have to store and ship all of your stuff, unfortunately. Deneen says, love the haircut. Thank you, Deneen. I appreciate that. So kind of you. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to have to help me. If you see a big name that I pull, you're going to have to let me know who he is. Because I really am just a very, very, very casual baseball fan. Chris says, more Dollar Tree videos in the work. Those are my favorite. Yes, two coming up this week. Flipping Sports Guy says, I remember eBay going to test FBA in Europe, I believe. Yeah, they've tried it a whole bunch. The issue is, is that there's so many different types of item and size item um, and like non-standardized product catalogs that it's very difficult to create an efficient system that isn't like insanely expensive for sellers. If you're doing an unboxing, it's genre correct to show the unboxing and pack opening. Just saying. Yeah, I didn't plan on doing this. I have unboxing videos on my sports card channel. Um, but I just started doing this in the middle of the live stream. So if you want to watch my actual unboxing videos that are genre correct, um, you can go to that channel. And they're, they're there. Whoops, I just opened the Bowman Chrome Mega... Ah, oh, shoot. Well, here's the moho Mojos. There we go. Jordan Westberg. Corbin Carroll. Luis Garcia. Rookie of the Year favorite. Eddie Diaz. Bowman Chrome first. Mojo first, and Antonio Gomez. Number 23, Yankees prospect. Number 22, Colorado prospect. Number 90, overall prospect. Number 7, Orioles prospect. So that's our first Mojo pack. We'll put all those in penny sleeves. We'll look them all up. We'll list them all. None of these names are jumping out at me as names I should know. Uh, in that pack. So if they are good names, please let me know. Are any of those guys worth collecting or selling? Are any of those guys like, uh, you know, are they, are they good players? I would love to, for my sports card unboxing channel to get more views, but it's a really tough niche to break into. All right, last Bowman Chrome Mega pack. We'll do it on camera so you know I'm not, I'm not, uh, stuffing it. I don't think we have an autograph in here. Keone, Kevin, I can't say it. Number seven, Twins Prospect. <coughs> Austin Hendrick. Oh, a pink one. 
Hey, it's numbered to 199, so not an auto. Austin Hendrick, Jordan Belozovich. Number 74 overall prospect, numbered to 199. Garrett Mitchell and Marco Luciano. Now the fun part. Let's look up these guys. Let's look up their names. And, uh, and let's see how much these cards are worth. Right? That's why you're here. Where do I get my penny sleeves? I buy them at Meyer or Target if they're there. There we go. Jordan Belozovich to 199. I don't understand why numbered cards aren't worth more. I think I think that a lot of people don't like them because I, I buy them on auction cheap all the time and I can usually sell them for like two or three times what I get for them on auction. Like I, I got a, like I'll buy them for like four or five bucks and sell them for 1995 all the time. Just because like there's only so many of them, you know, it's supply and demand. People in the collecting space don't always get that though. So that was fun. Now let's see if I was an idiot and should have sold the box. I heard that Cracker Barrel sells sports cards too. So these are going to be 2021 Bowman Chrome. Mojo. Garrett Mitchell. Okay, let's keep. I'm gonna keep a running tab. This card sells for four dollars, and I'm just gonna do gross revenue. Gross revenue. Garrett Mitchell, Chrome, $4. Austin Hendrick. Not too good. Looks like this Austin Hendrick card is worth about $3. So far, we are in the, in the red. Jordan Belozovich. Probably not how you say his name. Out of 199. Uh, we're going to sort by buy it now. I do not do auctions unless like, especially for a card that's relatively rare. Um, does it matter if they're a good player so long as the card sells for a good price? Generally, the better players sell for more. Flipping Sports Guy says, it's because every card gets numbered now. Even John Doe will have multiple variations, even though he's a complete bum. Very true, very true. I'm going to say three bucks for that card. I think I can get three bucks for it. Bala. Zovich, pink, 199, three bucks. Marco Luciano. Marco Luciano. I'm seeing purples for him, but not. But not uh, the same card. What number is it? BCP8. Uh, 
Uh, okie dokie. Oh, six, one, one sold for six dollars, one sold for two. So we'll just say four bucks uh, to average the two. If someone wants a card, they'll probably pay four bucks for it. I've, I've kind of noticed that. Like, there's no real benefit to going down below two or three dollars. Because if someone wants a card, they're going to buy it. They're going to pay three bucks for it. That's still like in the impulse price range. Mojo, Keone, Cavaco. And I'm probably slaughtering these guys' names. Three bucks. Antonio Gomez first. Okay, now we got a Yankees player. Still though, we're still in the uh, in like the three dollar range. I'll just say three bucks for that one too. Eddie Diaz first. Plays for the uh, Rockies. Three dollars. Rookie of the Year, Luis Garcia. Looks like, uh, again, it's like two bucks on that card. Wow. Corbin Carroll. Two bucks. Man, people are really going low. Jordan Westberg is the next one. Yikes, it is raining really hard here. If the power goes out, the power goes out. Especially if someone is a fan of a player or wanting to complete a team set, they'll buy a single card for three bucks instead of trying to buy a pack. Oh yeah, definitely. David said, liked your video where you listed your death pile. Was interesting to follow your thought process. Well, thank you, David. Man, it is so dark outside. Holy crap. Crap. This is like a tornado coming through here. All right, now we're through the mojos. We're on to the regular chrome cards. So, uh, let's see. Chrome. Not mojo. This Jared Kelly car is worth just like three bucks. Isaiah Green. <laughs> Yikes, yeah, this is our first card with no comps. I spelled his name wrong. Three bucks, two bucks, we'll say two fifty. Seth Beer. Two bucks. Tyler Callahan. Two bucks. This is 
a bust, man. Eddie Diaz first. <laughs> Two bucks. Francisco Alvarez. Two bucks. Julio Rodriguez, two bucks. Josiah Gray. Two bucks. So, with the cards that are like the valuable ones, looks like our total is... $46.50. We'll probably get a dollar for each of these cards. Two. Well, let's see what the Let's see what that card's worth. Yeah, that card's only worth about two dollars. So probably we didn't make any money, I, I wouldn't say. Um, you know, maybe made a little bit, probably lost a couple bucks. Uh, as opposed to selling the box by itself. That's fine. It was still fun to do, you know, whatever. Sometimes you chase big cards, you don't get them. Uh, on that note, it's been like two hours. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, appreciate you guys watching, and I'll have some Dollar Tree videos coming up this week. It is, the power is going to come out here soon anyways, so uh, see you guys later, and as always, don't be a shithead.